Hello guys, I hope you all are doing good. I am Vishali Kikan and we are discussing the antennas and the wave propagation. So today in this session we are going to talk about the Woodward Lawson sampling method. As the name suggests, this method was introduced by the two scientists Woodward and Lawson and this is the reason it is called the Woodward Lawson sampling method. It is a method for the beam shaping. Now we have more such methods as well like the Fourier method but we, we are going to see that how the Woodward Lawson method is better as compared to the Fourier method. So let's start our discussion with the Woodward Lawson method. So this method is going to give me the beam shaping right. So it is going to give me the synthesis of field patterns as well. So whenever I want to synthesize field pattern I will be using the composing function. So in the Woodward Lawson method we have different composing functions and we are going to combine them. We are going to add these composing function and by adding we are going to get the output field. Right. So this is the method that is we are going to discuss in this video in detail. So now it is used for the beam shaping as I have already told you because the name is Woodward Lawson sampling method. Obviously from the name we are getting it's a method of sampling. So here at the discrete levels we are getting some output. So now here synthesis is done by sampling right. So here we have some discrete locations and at the discrete locations we are going to synthesize. We are not going to synthesize the field pattern at the continuous locations right. We are going to select some discrete location and there we are going to synthesize the pattern. So this is reason it is called the sampling method. Right, I hope you understood this thing. So now here we are going to form the composing function. So what is the composing function? Composing function is actually the harmonic current. Now harmonic current is having the uniform amplitude distribution and uniform progressive phase distribution. Uniform progressive phase distribution. Right, whose corresponding field? Now current will be having some field associated with it. So this field associated with this current which is having uniform amplitude and uniform progressive phase is called as composing function. Now the composing function is referred as the field right. So field is actually the composing function. Now when I have line source line source and the array both are having different composing function. So now the line source is having the composing function of the form bm sin psi m upon psi m form right. When I have the linear array so in the case of array we have bm sin n phi m upon n psi phi m. We have talked about psi n phi when I was talking about the array right. So I hope you understood the different type of forms and denotes the number of elements in the array. Right, so now what is BM? BM is the coefficient of excitation. Right, how we can find out the BM? So it's the coefficient of excitation. It is denoted by the field strength. Now, it, when the field strength is equal to the amplitude of the desired pattern, then the corresponding sample point is taken as the BM. So field strength is equal to the amplitude of desired pattern then the sample point is taken as the BM. Right, so now the total harmonics will be having the finite summations only. We are not going to get the infinite summation and this is the reason this becomes a very simple and user friendly method. So we have finite summation of harmonics. Now these harmonics are there in the space. So these are varying in the space. So at different locations we have different harmonics right. So now coming to the synthesis pattern. Now the synthesis pattern how we are going to synthesize with the help of synthesis pattern. The synthesize method is going to discuss over here we are going to discuss it later on first we are going to see what is the synthesis pattern. So we are having finite summation as I told you we have finite summation of the fields or I can say we are having the finite summation of the composing function. Now each term in the composing function represents a harmonic. So harmonic is the current harmonic right. So 
with the current harmonic what is associated the field so field is associated with the current harmonic and the current harmonic is going to have the uniform amplitude and the uniform progressive phase so what we are having we are having the composing function now we are having the finite summation of the composing function and this is how we are going to synthesize the given field pattern of the given antennas right so now here theta will have values from minus k plus kz less than equal to zeta less than equal to k minus kz so from minus k plus kz to k minus kz i will be having the value of zeta and now current distribution is extended over minus l by 2 less than equal to z dash and less than equal to l by 2 so from minus l by 2 to l by 2 i will be having the current distribution so now here i can represent sf theta or sf zeta as the fourier transform of the current right so i z dash represents the current and e raised to power j zeta z dash dz dash represents the fourier transform so we are taking the fourier transform of i z dash i hope you understood this is the current harmonic and we are taking its Fourier transform to find out SF theta and SF zeta. Right? If I want to find out the harmonic current from SF theta or F SF zeta. Now, what is SF theta and SF zeta? These are the synthesis function. And now, if I want to find out I z dash, I can take the inverse Fourier transform of SF zeta or SF theta. So, Inverse Fourier transform will be having the formula 1 upon 2 pi minus infinity to infinity integration SF zeta e raised to power minus j z dash zeta d zeta. So here we have e raised to power plus j z dash zeta. Here we will be having e raised to power minus j z dash zeta and here we will be having a factor of 1 upon 2 pi. That we know the inverse Fourier transform we know. Now the I Z dash will also be equal to instead of S F zeta I can put S F theta as well. So 1 upon 2 pi minus infinity to infinity S F theta e raised to power minus J Z dash zeta D zeta. So now here we will be having the excitation distribution and the far field. Both of them are related by the Fourier transform. We have already seen that. Now with the help of composing function how we can form the overall field pattern right so we will be having different composing functions first composing function second third and so on we will be having many composing function and how with the help of these composing function we are going to synthesize the overall field pattern so first composing function is taken the first composing function is a pattern whose beam placement is determined by the uniform progressive phase so the first pattern will be having the beam placement at the uniform progressive phase so i will take the first pattern i will place it at the uniform progressive phase location so we will be having the innermost side level by placing the first composing function right so we, the innermost level will be having at the level of minus 13.5 db right so we will be having the other levels which are also monotonically decreasing so we will be having at the minus 13.5 db the innermost level and the outermost level are monotonically decreasing and how in the space i have placed this innermost level with the help of the uniform progressive phase i will be finding out the location now the second composing function i have to merge the second composing function with the first composing function so the second composing function is having the uniform progressive phase the composing function is having the uniform progressive phase that we all know so now it is adjusted the uniform progressive phase of the second composing function is adjusted so that the main lobe of the second composing function coincide with the innermost lobe of the first composing function so we had already talked about the innermost lobe so here the main lobe is coinciding with the innermost lobe of the first composing function and this is how we are going to fill the innermost null of the pattern at the innermost null we will be having the second composing function and this is how the innermost side lobe level is having the null which is filled out with the second composing function now amount of filling is controlled by the amplitude of the second composing function if the second composing function is having more amplitude the filling will be more because the first composing function was having null at that location and second was giving the amplitude so amplitude just 
depend upon the second composing function. Now the third composing function. Again, I have to superimpose the third composing function on the combination of first and second composing function. So the maximum of the main lobe of third composing function will superimpose on the null of the innermost composing function, right? So we will be having the innermost null. At the innermost null, I am going to put out the maximum of the third composing function. So now I hope you understood how we are composing all of the beam pattern with the help of the various composing function. If after the third composing function, I will be having the further composing function, I will find out the innermost null and I will find out the maximum of the side lobe level and then I superimpose the innermost null with the maximum side lobe level and this is how we are going to form the beam, right? So this is how we will be having the final output field pattern synthesis. Now this is a very simple and the elegant method and this is going to provide the insight in the process of the pattern synthesis how the pattern is synthesized with the first composing function, second, third and so on. It is going to give me the insight about that. So this is a very beautiful method which gives me various details about the patterns or the radiation pattern, field pattern of the given antenna or the antenna arrays as well. So the next property about the Woodward Lawson method is that it lacks control over the side lobe levels in the unshaped region of entire pattern. So there is no control on the side lobe level when I make the beam or synthesize the beam with the help of Woodward Lawson method. Now it is having less numerical methods and it is having uh, less iterative methods as well. So I can say it is a simpler method which can be executed very easily. So it deals with the synthesis of field pattern that we already know. So I hope you understood each and everything about the Woodward Lawson sampling method. If you have any doubt regarding any concept related to the Woodward Lawson sampling method, I hope you will be putting it in the comment and I will be trying to resolve your doubt as soon as possible. I hope you like this session. If you like it, please push the like button, subscribe to the channel, share it with your friends and do give me your feedback as well. Thank you so much.